So without further ado, let me introduce our morning session speakers. Um, Dr. Li Yanfang is a professor at the uh, Collaborative Innovation Center for Assessment Toward Basic Education Quality at Beijing Normal University, and she's responsible for the National Arts Education Quality Assessment. She received her doctorate from BNU uh, in psychology, and her research focuses on the development of children and adolescents' mental behaviors, the effects of environmental factors from family and school contexts. Dr. Luo Liang is a professor and deputy director at the uh, same center as uh, Dr. Li at, B at BNU, and he uh, also serves as the deputy director of the National Assessment Center of Education Quality, so NAEQ. As I often tell my colleagues here, it's just one letter different from our own NAEP, National Assessment Educational Progress. Um, Dr. Luo also got, her, uh, got his PhD from the School of Psychology at Beijing Normal University in 2008, and his research interests include psychological development of children, academic achievement, and effects of environmental factors from family and school contexts. He has directed more than 10 national projects supported by the Ministry of Education, the National Natural Science Foundation, and the National Social Science Foundation of China. And last but not least, Professor Xing Tao. Um, he is um, a professor of statistics and measurement at the Collaborative Innovation Center of Assessment Toward Basic Education Quality, is the executive Dep deputy director of that center, and uh, received his PhD from BNU as well. But he has another PhD from Teachers College, uh, Columbia. And his interests include the educational quality evaluation, uh, psychometrics, test theory, developmental psychology, and has directed more than 20 national and international projects. Meanwhile, he's also published more than 150 articles that appear in academic journals, both in English and in uh, Chinese. So without further ado, uh, let's give a round of applause to our speakers from Beijing. Professor Tsai. Good morning, uh, everyone. T today, first topic is report on the quality of compulsory education in China. Uh, some key findings from the National Assessment of Education Quality. The first part is background. Uh, it is well known that uh, China has a uh, huge population of children. Uh, there are uh, 247 million children aged from 0 to 15 years old. Uh, it is uh, ranked fifth in all uh, in total population of all country. Uh, after 40 years development, uh, the nine-year compulsory education had covered more than 99% of whole popula population in China. So, so uh, China compulsory education has developed from uh, popularization to promotion states. It is very urgent to enter high quality school for many people. So the price of a house close to high uh, quality school is very high. The quality and uh, equity uh, of compulsory education has become the key issue. Uh, so the China government uh, is important to uh, the quality and the equity of compulsory education. Uh, but how to evaluate the quality and equity in education? The traditional uh, indicators in uh, China is the school building, uh, school equipment, teacher qualification, uh, student teacher ratio, and uh, student fundings. In fact, student development is the most important uh, 
criterion. But uh, before uh, the implementation of NAEQ, the development of a student has not been for, uh, fully understood in China. Uh, so we didn't know the national status, the regional disparities, the urban rural gaps, the gender differences, impact of investment, and the uh, impact of curriculum and family. So in 2007, the national assessment of compulsory education quality was initiated with the support from Ministry of Education. This is the database of the national assessment of compulsory education quality for 12 years. Uh, also some province in China, for Shanghai, Beijing, Jiangsu, and Zhejiang province have participated in PISA of OECD, uh, but they are not uh, representative of China because there are only a few provinces. So this database is current only education data in China that contains the developmental records of primary and middle school students across the country. Uh, this is uh, assessment content and tools. Uh, two of six dermis are uh, assessed each year. And uh, the first whole assessment period of uh, all six dermis was uh, completed from uh, 2015 to 27. Uh, 2015 is math and uh, fitness and health. 2016 uh, is Chinese and arts. 2017 is science and moral education. Assessment tools include uh, paper-based assessment and performance assessment. Next, we report uh, some key uh, findings from the NAEQ. The first result is about students' performance in mathematics, Chinese, and uh, science. To help user interpret what a student score means in substantive terms, NAEQ are divided, di divided into for proficiency level from below basic to advanced level. All students uh, should be expected to attain level two with the accepted compulsory education. This is grade four students for math. 27.8% of students uh, of student is in advanced level. 84.6% of students uh, is in basic or higher level. This is Chinese. Uh, about uh, 21 percent of students in advanced level. 81.8 percent is in basic or higher level. This is a science. Uh, only 16 percent is in advanced level. 76.8 uh, percent is in basic or higher level. This is uh, grade eight students. Uh, this is math, this is uh, Chinese, and uh, this is science. So those Chinese students have a good academic performance in mathematics and Chinese. Nearly 20% of students are still below the basic level with deserved attention. The quality of science need to be further improved, especially for fourth grade students who have a uh, proportion below the basic level and the fourth and eighth grade students who only have few amount reaching the advanced level. The second result is about engagement in reading activity. Engagement 
in reading activity is an important indicator of a reading habit. The amount of time students spend on extracurricular reading per day is an important indicator. NAEQ result uh, shows that Seventy-four point uh, four percent of grade four students report that they spend extra curriculum reading for more than uh, fifteen minutes per day. Uh, for grade eight student, seventy-nine point four percent of students reported that they spend extra curriculum reading for more than fifteen minutes per day. Another important uh, indicator is the number of reading uh, extracurricular books in the past month. This is a result. Uh, NAEK result shows that 92% uh, of grade four students report that they read one or more books in the past month. Uh, for grade eight students, uh, this data is uh, 91.6 percent. So what do students like to read uh, is also an important uh, issue f for us. Based on data reported by students, the three books uh, that for the great students like to read, uh, the top three for grade uh, four student is Grim uh, Fairy Tales, uh, Journey to the West, and the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. For uh, grade eight student, top three is Journey to the West, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, and uh, Dawn Blossoms Placket at the Dark. Uh, this is a summary. Chinese students have developed basic reading habits during compulsory education. However, the amount of time spent on reading and the quantity of reading are relatively low. The third result is about students' academic burden. Now, uh, students' academic burden uh, is a concern of a Chinese society. In China, the school attests great importance to the Chinese and uh, math classes and uh, willing to increase the number of Chinese and math classes. But it is easy to ignore other courses like uh, political education and arts. According to the policy enacted by the Ministry of Education of China, the number of Chinese classes in the fourth grade should be six sessions per week. And the number of mathematics cl classes in the fourth and the eighth grade should be four or five sessions per week. But the NAEQ results showed that in the fourth grade, the proportion of schools with more than six Chinese classes per week was 72%. The proportion of schools with more than five mathematic classes per week was 67.2%. And in the 80th grade, the proportion of schools with more than five mathematics classes per week was 73.3%. Another important indicator uh, of student academic burden is the amount of time students spend on uh, homework uh, per day. This is the math homework uh, times per day. So, uh, 33.6% of students report that they spend more than 30 minutes per day doing math homework. 14.7% of students spend more than 60 minutes. For grade eight students, 
50.2% students spend more than 30 minutes per day doing math homework. So 19.2% students spend more than 60 uh, minutes. This is Chinese homework times. It is similar to math. The amount of time students attend out of school times, academic uh, tutoring classes per week, uh, is another uh, indicator of academic burden. Out of school time, uh, including uh, Saturday and Sunday, uh, and the night of from Monday to a Friday. The NAEQ result shows that 43.8% of grade 4 students report that they attend after school times math lesson per week. This is summary. Students have a heavy academic burden, including many math, uh, mathematics and Chinese classes every week long homework time per day, and a, a higher proportion of students attending out of school time academic tutoring classes. The fourth result is about students' fitness and health. This is a pass rates and excellent rates on vital capacity, speed, and uh, strength. Uh, pass rate of uh, vital capacity, speed, sh uh, strength uh, is, is here. But uh, excellent rate uh, of vital capacity, speed, and strength is different. So excellent rate of uh, vital capacity is here, but uh, uh, excellent rate of strength is so low. This is a uh, thing of students. Uh, based on national student physical health standard, uh, the NEQ result showed 8.5% uh, of boys are uh, obese, 5.1% of grade 4 girls and 6.2% of grade 8 girls are obese. Uh, this is uh, my OPR rate of students. So uh, result shows that 36.5 of fourth grade students and uh, 60 5.3 of 80th grade student have uh, my OPR. This is the sleep time of students per day. It is well known that adequate sleep is important for student health. The Ministry of Education of China suggests that uh, primary school students sleep more than uh, 10 hours per day and a junior uh, high school students sleep more than uh, nine hours per day. The result shows that 30.7% uh, of grade four students report that they sleep more than 10 hours per day. And uh, for uh, eight students, 16.6% uh, of of a student report that they sleep more than nine hours per day. In general, pass rate of uh, uh, vital capacity, speed, and strength is uh, uh, fairly high, but uh, probably of obesity, myopia, and the lack of sleep are still uh, serious. 
this is about the future direction of NEQ. Uh, the first is to encourage and support research to use a database. Uh, we are many uh, database. Uh, the second is play important role in policy making uh, for uh, children well-being. The third is extend to the preschool and high school years. That's all. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. OK, good morning. I'm Yan Fang Li, and uh, I am a visiting scholar now in the Crestor uh, Center. So uh, I want to say thanks for Professor Eva Bakes and Professor Sally's invitation, and uh, thanks for many guys' help. So uh, I'm glad that this is the second time for me to participate in the Crest the conference. In 2016, I gave an uh, overview of the National Arts Education Quality Assessment in China. So today, my talk will focus on the uh, arts teachers, especially the music teachers. So this is my uh, topic. Uh, my talk will uh, introduce three parts. Firstly, I want to give some uh, background information uh, our music education and the music teachers in China. So you know, in Chinese uh, primary and secondary schools, there are two major arts-related subjects. One is music, and the other is visual arts. Uh, so uh, uh, at present, with the quality education promotion, uh, the school and the public pay much attention to students' comprehensive development. So the arts, literacy, and the music ability attracts more and more attention in China. This is about the music teachers in Chinese primary schools. Uh, this is the statistic data from the Ministry of Education in last year. From the figure, we can see that uh, the Music uh, teachers in primary schools uh, it, uh, was nearly about uh, 215,000. Uh, although the number is big, but uh, uh, when we uh, count the uh, average, we can see that for per school, just uh, about one music teachers in each uh, primary school. And the ratio of Chinese teacher to music teacher is nearly about 10 to 1. So uh, I want to introduce the present rules of music teachers in primary and secondary schools. So firstly, uh, the teachers need to give their music class. Uh, averagely, uh, they need to give uh, two class per week. Also, a small number of schools has not given the music class to the students. That's their national assessment uh, result. And, uh, uh, in addition, uh, after school at uh, 3 p.m. o'clock, uh, and the uh, primary schools set up many rich extracurricular activities for the students. So among the uh, extracurricular activities, music and arts-related activities are the essential parts. So the music teachers also need to uh, design and organize uh, these kinds of uh, extracurricular activities. And you know, also in China, the teachers also need to be responsible for uh, help students participate in some competition or some performance about uh, arts. So from above, um, we can see that maybe some issues about the music teachers uh, are, uh, are faced with now. So we can uh, say uh, that the first uh, issue is about the quantity. Uh, we can say that's uh, less quantity. And uh, the music teachers play multiple roles, just as I mentioned. And, uh, and another issue is about the uh, not very high salary. Here I want to give an example. So, you know, except the uh, basic salary, uh, the Chinese uh, schools also give teachers the class fee for each class they give. 
So I know from many, many music teachers tell me that uh, for the Chinese or math teachers, uh, they give each class the, the, the class phase a ratio, or I can just say the coefficient is 1.2, but for the music and uh, visual arts teachers, the coefficient is uh, 0 0.8. That's the complement of many music and visual arts teachers. So this, these situations may be cause uh, some not very uh, positive feelings that uh, the arts teachers have, such as uh, the uh, large professor and their uh, not very high career identity, etc. So uh, in our assessment, uh, except for the uh, students' music achievement and uh, the students' music interests and the involvement activities, etc., we also care about the teachers as uh, another important uh, a person, uh, their status and their uh, potential influence uh, on students' uh, music achievement and uh, interests. So for the teacher's assi uh, assessment, we uh, mainly including four aspects about the teacher's background, uh, professional feelings, their qualification, and the class teaching. So uh, this is the uh, first national arts education quality assessment information. Uh, we collected about uh, 200,000 students in grade four and eight. Uh, their music and visual arts literacy by their uh, standard achievement and their uh, singing, or, uh, singing or drawing performance test. And we also collect uh, about uh, uh, 8,500 uh, 8, music teachers and uh, uh, same number of visual arts teachers data from uh, about uh, uh, 6,000 schools. And uh, in uh, the present study, uh, I select uh, parts uh, samples uh, to show their uh, findings. Uh, I selected uh, nine provinces uh, from China, uh, China's east, uh, central, or western regions, and uh, about 1,500 schools, uh, about uh, 1,500 music teachers uh, come into their uh, sample. So uh, for uh, uh, the today's report, uh, I mainly focus on these research variables about the teachers. The first is about the teachers' demographic uh, uh, information, and uh, the second is about the teachers' qualification, uh, include their uh, full or part-time uh, uh, status, and uh, their uh, major is match or uh, mismatch information. And the third part is the main part, uh, including the, uh, it's, it's mainly about the teacher's professional feelings, uh, such as their working and income satisfaction, their pro, uh, profession pressure, uh, and career identity, etc. And uh, the last one is about their classroom teaching. So uh, about data, we, we get about data uh, by asking uh, students, uh, teachers themselves, or the principals to fill out the questionnaire. So for example, about the uh, teacher's teaching activity and the class demonstration, we uh, ask the uh, students to report about uh, uh, these two aspects. So based on the data uh, in this report, we intended to depict the status of music teachers in current China and uh, to construct the relationships between the teachers and the students' outcomes. And then uh, we try to provide some implications for the teacher training and career development, et cetera. So uh, in the second part, these are the some uh, uh, findings from the uh, nine provinces data. First is about the uh, demographics of music teachers, including their background and their qualification information. So from the uh, two figures, we can see that uh, I, I guess maybe that's the uh, same uh, phenomena in uh, United States. So most of all music teachers are female, and about 80% teachers aged 
20 to 40 years old. And uh, we also investigate uh, the numbers of music teachers in each school to uh, let the uh, principals to report uh, the number and their feeling. So we can see that uh, averagely 63% uh, of principals report that they are uh, lacking our music teachers. And for the rural schools, it's more serious. It's nearly about 90% uh, 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 of schools report that lacking of music teachers. And uh, as I mentioned uh, um, above, in, uh, whether in urban or rural schools, uh, less than two teachers in each school. So about the qualification of music teachers, I will show the data from the match and the uh, part of full time status. So, uh, very similarly, we can say that uh, about 40% uh, of music teachers are not a uh, music uh, major. So that's a mismatch. And uh, uh, similarly, uh, about 40% of the music teachers are part-time. So could you understand what's the meaning of part-time? We further uh, analyzed the data and we found that uh, among the part-time music teachers, uh, most of them are Chinese. <laughs> Can you understand the Chinese teacher to give the music at the same time? And uh, uh, some, uh, some uh, uh, other subject teachers, such as the, uh, English or math or um, moral or science, also give the music teachers at the same time. So from this figure, we can imagine that uh, if the students are need to uh, uh, take uh, some uh, examination, the, the Chinese or math uh, teacher, uh, the teachers will exchange, uh, exchange the music teacher into the math or Chinese teachers. So that's, uh, that's the music class status in the uh, primary schools. And about the major and full-time uh, status, the urban schools are significantly higher than the rural schools, especially for the full-time uh, person. We can see that the urban is better for uh, about two, uh, two times than the rural schools. And uh, uh, this is uh, the picture shows the imbalance among the non-province uh, we can see that there's a huge gap among the different provinces. Uh, so this is just uh, the uh, data of the nine provinces. So we can from this picture to, uh, to, to imagine the whole picture about the 31 provinces. So the, the, the gap is very huge. So we can say in one province, the uh, match the major and the full time teachers percentage is just a, a 10 or 20 percent. So uh, uh, then I will show some uh, results about the teachers, music teachers' professional feelings from uh, several aspects. So we ask the teachers if they are satisfied with their job as the music teachers. So it's, it's not very bad. About 70% of teachers actually were satisfied with their job as the music teachers. However, when we asked about their satisfaction with their income, only 26% uh, person uh, music teachers were satisfied with their income. So we wonder if it is a specific phenomenon about the music teachers, the way to uh, uh, analyze their data on the Chinese teachers. We also found the similar, uh, very similar uh, trend uh, in the Chinese teachers. So we can see that maybe it's, it's, it is not a specific uh, uh, phenomenon for the music teachers. And about the working and the income satisfaction, uh, interestingly, we can see that the rural schools is a little higher than the urban schools. And about the teachers, uh, teachers' profession uh, pressure, uh, we use a four uh, liquid, uh skill to uh, ask the teachers to report their pressure. And from a one no pressure to four a large pressure, we, the result showed that our music teachers um, feel a relatively large pressure. And about the resource of, of 
profession pressure, uh, we can find that uh, uh, most of teachers uh, uh, report that uh, their profession uh, mainly comes from the requirements from society, school, and parents. And the second one is student safety. So you know in China, in Chinese uh, schools, safety is uh, always the first place Thing, uh, you know, so even because uh, there are so much students need to manage in the schools, so safety is the first place for, uh, yeah. So and uh, uh, the other professions come from their professional ranking and the salary and the welfare, uh, welfare etc. Et so we also uh, investigate uh, the teacher's career identity. Uh, well, we ask uh, the teachers uh, if they think that uh, uh, their work as a music teacher is valuable. Yeah, so it's very uh, positive that uh, about 90% teachers that think that is a valuable uh, professional career. But uh, when we ask her if they think that the work is promising, uh, so you know the promising, uh, so only 40% uh, uh, teachers think that is most promising. And uh, uh, when we ask the teachers if uh, uh, it, uh, the job is valued by the society, nearly 60% uh, teachers think that the social public doesn't pay attention to their work. Uh, also, uh, not uh, the, the the low satisfaction for uh, income and uh, not very high uh, career identity when uh, they uh, were asked about their uh, promising and uh, the society pay attention. Uh, but the, studio, uh, the, the the teachers uh, also said that if let them rechoice, about uh, seventy four teachers are willing to stay as a music teacher. And uh, the urban and the full time and the major match teachers are better uh, than their counterparts. Uh, these are the, about, uh, about the uh, teachers' professional feelings. Uh, then we uh, uh, try uh, to uh, explore uh, uh, we, whether there are some factors related to teachers' professional feelings. We selected uh, the teacher's general attitude on art as an uh, internal uh, factor and uh, uh, the school support on arts as an external factor to explore the relationships between uh, these factors and the teacher's professional feeling. We can say that uh, the teachers with high attitude also uh, have the better uh, ratings and better career identity. And the school support, uh, so you know in Chinese schools, uh, uh, according to the rules, each school must have one leader, uh, such as the vice principal or the teaching uh, dean, uh, should be responsible for the arts teaching in their school. So uh, we uh, investigate whether the school leader participate in their uh, teaching uh, and the research of music uh, uh, teaching and uh, uh, whether the school leader go to the class to watch the teacher's class as the uh, integrator of school support. And we found that uh, uh, the school support uh, has an independent and consistent uh, effect on uh, teachers' professional feelings after controlling for uh, other demographic variables influence. So the third one we uh, we try to explore the associations of teachers' uh, status and students' outcomes, and this is a correlational table. We can see that the teachers' professional feelings and their teaching and the students' music achievement and interests are uh, significantly correlated. And uh, uh, the teachers' teaching also uh, correlated with students' outcomes. So we uh, try uh, the mediating effect analysis by constructing uh, this model. Uh, we can see that uh, for the profession, uh, profession pressure uh, to influence music achievement and interests, we can see that the teaching activities uh, uh, fully mediated uh, this, uh, the, the, two, uh, the two variables associations.
and uh, about the association between working satisfaction, career identity with music interests. We also found the teaching activities made in effect and just uh, particularly made it uh, these associations. So that's uh, some uh, results I showed today. Uh, based on uh, based on the uh, findings, uh, I intend to provide some implications for uh, Chinese uh, arts uh, teachers' uh, construction. So uh, we can see that the uh, less quantity and not very high qualification are the major issues that music teachers uh, face now. So uh, we can see that uh, uh, maybe in the long time, there are uh, uh, sufficient and uh, professional uh, full-time music teachers is a, a beautiful future, but uh, that's need uh, a long way to go, and it's challenging at the present for the uh, schools, even though the uh, best uh, urban, uh, rural, uh, urban schools in the city. So at present, uh, we must uh, recruit, uh, uh, take some complementary solution, such as uh, use their part-time music teachers. But we suggest that for these part-time music teachers, must offer them uh, professional training. So you know, in our assessment, we found that uh, uh, among the 40% part-time music teachers, uh, you should remember that um, uh, among the part-time music teachers, uh, most of them didn't receive any music professional trainings. And uh, actually, uh, uh, at present, uh, some local government has already uh, released some policy to res uh, resolve the music teacher quantity issue, such as uh, uh, encouraging the uh, schools to make use of social resources, uh, such as including invite the uh, social artist or the uh, university uh, art uh, teachers and into the primary and the secondary schools. For example, in Beijing, the capital of China, uh, the Ch uh, Beijing uh, uh, government uh, in, uh, in uh, encourage, uh, encourage the, uh, uh, the university art teachers in into the primary and the secondary schools. So uh, in rural province and rural schools, the about merits need to be more strongly promoted. So the second implication is about the teacher's professional feelings. So I think that's a very uh, important aspect for the music teacher's uh, construction and stability. So we can see that we want to change the uh, music teacher's professional feelings. The, uh, we need to firstly change the music teaching status in China. So, you know, in China, the assessment as a, as a pattern maybe uh, influence what subjects uh, status. So, you know, uh, actually for a long time, uh, the music and arts subjects hasn't been included in the assessment uh, system. Uh, but in recent years, some local government has already uh, put the uh, music and arts uh, into the uh, high school entrance examination. And in the national assessment we, uh, we carried out, the arts uh, with other five major uh, subjects had been included in the assessment framework. I think that uh, these are the good beginning, but it also needed a long time to universally promote it. Uh, with the government uh, change and uh, uh, emphasize, uh, emphasize the schools will change their music uh, teaching status. So you know in, uh, in some schools we have the major and the minor uh, separation. So uh, music, visual arts and physics as the minor, minor subjects hadn't got similar attention as the other major subjects. And the public will pay attention to the significance of music learning. So with this uh, change, the music teachers' uh, professional feelings uh, we all uh, change at the same time. So last one is about the uh, teachers' teaching activities. So actually, we analyzed many, many about the teachers' data. We always found that the teaching activity are the most proximal factors 
that affecting students' learning. So improve the teacher's uh, teaching activities. Maybe it's a, uh, it's a uh, effective uh, solution to uh, improve students' music outcomes. So how to give the teacher training? And uh, uh, so in China, uh, in each district, there is um, there are one to two uh, researchers about the music uh, to help the uh, the schools in the district, uh, the school teachers to uh, to teaching to improve their teaching and the research. So uh, how to uh, let the music researchers rule uh, to play and help their teachers uh, is a is a uh, uh, issue that need to uh, uh, was attention. So that's the uh, that's uh, that's all I reported today. Thank you for your attention. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, I would like to uh, express my uh, great appreciation to UCLA, to UCLA Crest, to Pro Professor Li Cai. And just now, two of my colleagues actually show some kind of findings uh, from our national assessment of educational quality. We call that as NAEQ or NIC. Um, and now I will uh, try to introduce a little bit about uh, our uh, uh, ICT system to uh, improve uh, NAEQ. And that, yeah, that kind of work actually uh, was supported by a, a Chinese a big company we call the Xunfei Company. And uh, when we organized this, uh, this session, actually we invited one senior researcher from that company, but he, did, he didn't get the visa. So, uh, so I was uh, <coughs> uh, trying to introduce this part. So if there are any uh, mis- uh, understanding, so it's due to my background. As Li Cai said, my background is a measurement or psychometrics area. Uh, so my topic here we call when NAEQ meet uh, internet. So current status and uh, perspec uh, perspectives. I will, um, I will take uh, roughly about 10 minutes to introduce it because I want to leave a few minutes to uh, people to ask a question. A uh, very brief background. As we all know, in, current, in the context of information age, the ways of teaching and learning is undergoing fundamentally change. So we know lots of about the uh, 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 personalized learning, smart teaching, all these kind of the, uh, MOOCs, uh, all these kind of terminology so far. It seems that the change of teaching and learning approaches calls for an uh, update of measurement and evaluation uh, series and uh, actually approach. Um, so under the information background, it seems that big data driven or big data uh, based, uh, based measurement uh, is, uh, show some kind of potential. So which means that Originally, we uh, organized assessment work by uh, generate a framework, by develop uh, assessment tool, and by ask a group of people to take uh, examination or something like that. It's kind of an uh, active uh, approach. But now it seems that when uh, students learning, uh, they are learning information already existed in, uh, uh, in internet. So it seems that we don't need uh, do this kind of a very uh, uh, enforced approach. It seems that we can get some kind of information from internet and trying to uh, uh, give some kind of uh, generate some kind of information from students uh, are learning, uh, you know, tracking, and uh, so. So it's important. It's important that uh, to integrate the ICT to a national assessment of uh, basic educational quality. Here, basic education, it's very similar to American K-12. Uh, I will uh, quickly uh, introduce some kind of the, uh, uh, the prog uh, progress uh, actually in NIC. 
first, we actually we, uh, we built up the cloud uh, platforms to manage uh, to manage our uh, uh, assessment work. Uh, for example, we built up uh, item bank system. Through this system, uh, this system the, the item develop uh, process can be tracking through beginning a very uh, beginning uh, stage uh, up to uh, the final stage. So we can. And through this system, we can uh, write uh, the or, uh, original items and the review items and generate the test, uh, test uh, manually. So this, and we also actually set up uh, implementation process management system. So uh, in this system, the people uh, who actually respond for different parts of NIC uh, they have a very unique ID, and they can uh, uh, log on uh, their, we are, uh, our website or, or, or uh, go through the uh, mobile app, and they know their, what's their, their tasks and what's the prog progress of the current status. And we can uh, actually monitor the whole uh, process uh, the data collection uh, process. And uh, we also have a information uploading and a sampling system because uh, as we, uh, in NIC, actually we use a three-stage PPS, uh, uh, PPS uh, sampling approach. So we will collect information at the county level, at, the stu uh, at school level, and at the student's level. So in each stage, we, uh, in each stage, uh, stage, we ask the uh, local educational administration to actually to upload some kind of information for us to prepare the sampling approach. Uh, we also have an online questionnaire uh, system. So it's the easiest part actually for uh, large scale assessment. Uh, it's kind of we can use a online questionnaire system. It's, it's very easy uh, to um, uh, to uh, to use this kind of uh, technology. Uh, currently, actually, we collect uh, the teacher background questionnaire and uh, principal background questionnaire through as uh, online uh, questionnaire system. Uh, but we don't use this part actually for students because you know that China is so broad. So in some rural area, west area, there is no rich or no enough information uh, facilitated. And uh, we also uh, build up the automatic reporting uh, generator. So uh, as uh, Nick actually uh, promised to sh uh, give uh, each provinces and each sampled uh, county the, the feedback. So, but you know, every year there are about the 333 uh, sampled county. So if we uh, prepare this kind of report uh, by uh, individual, by people, so it will be a lot of work. So we, uh, we actually, we uh, uh, set up this uh, automatic uh, uh, reporting uh, generate, uh, generators. Actually, this uh, system was developed based on Python. Uh, and uh, we can, uh, um, we, uh, we can uh, actually generate the uh, reports, 300 uh, reports uh, automatically. And uh, we also have a standard, uh, standard setting facility, uh, facilitation system. Uh, you know that in our NIC, uh, in our NIC uh, program, Actually, we use the angle and the bookmark uh, approach actually to set uh, to set up uh, uh, standards uh, three uh, four level, uh, like uh, uh, Dr. Luoliang introduced uh, just now. So, but the, uh, this kind of the process is is very tedious because there are lots of work actually to ask uh, and judge, judges or experts to do, and uh, we. So we actually, we, uh, uh, we built up the computer facility system. So judges uh, can uh, make their decision uh, on computer 
and the computer provides the results automatically, so it's much easier for us. So that's the, the first part, uh, ICT uh, implementation. And the second part, actually, currently, we're trying to explore the possibility uh, that uh, the, for the rural time, dynamic monitoring of teaching. Because as we, we already, as we know that information technology already have a um, strong impact for our students' learning and the teaching. So which means that it seems uh, it, uh, it's, it's possible for us actually to collect some information and uh, you know, through internet. So uh, currently, because we work together with a uh, uh, Chinese uh, information company, so they have uh, some kind of uh, the system. For example, we, we actually we have a real-time tracking uh, teaching resources because Xunfei uh, company, they, have a, they sell the uh, white board. So which means that in many schools, they have a white board system. And we can actually track whether or not they use white board, how they use that kind of the white board. So they, they, that's uh, one part. And another part is more, uh, we go to deeper. We're trying to actually to uh, collect the information, teaching process information. We're trying to uh, uh, generate some kind of the, uh, uh, some, some kind of the uh, results from this, uh, the, uh, this information. Uh, uh, for example, here is an example. Uh, actually, we use a speech recognition technique, and uh, we, uh, we actually monitor the teaching, teaching process in different class. And we're trying to analyze how uh, teach, uh, student teacher interaction and how they provide, uh, pro provide knowledge to students and how students respond uh, for that. So uh, this, uh, uh, through our, uh, our preliminary um, uh, research, we found that in China, uh, although um, pure uh, instruction approach, uh, uh, there is uh, uh, roughly about 30% uh, uh, of class actually is a pure um, teacher instruction class. But most of the class actually is uh, it's a mixed class. Uh, uh, teacher will give a lessons, and they ask students some kind do some kind of ex, uh, ho uh, do some kind of homework, not homework, <laughs> but do some kind of work and, uh, uh, assignment. And also they ask students actually to discuss um, uh, all this kind of uh, work. Um, that's. <coughs> So the, the third part, the uh, application, ICT uh, application actually is to uh, visualize uh, educational quality. We use the uh, uh, geometric information system, which, because we already, it, it, it's uh, our center or NIC program is the only program that we have uh, uh, K-12 quality data uh, in China. So we integrate this assessment data over years. So, so far we have uh, uh, 30 years uh, quality data. So we, uh, we actually, we based on uh, geom uh, geographic information system, we're trying to sh uh, pr uh, visualize educational uh, quality information actually for decision making and also for uh, dissemination. So that's, for example, here it's, we use a personalized data mining approach and we can show that in different area how the quality looks like, uh, uh, cat quality looks like. Uh, the last, uh, last part of, uh, of ICT information, uh, uh, implementation actually is the development uh, of the uh, performance-based items because currently there are a lot of debate for large-scale assessment. So one strong debate is that uh, large-scale assessment, it seems that ignore the student's performance, uh, uh, it it's ignore some, some, some um, uh, psychological pers uh, perspective that we actually encourage 
but uh, this kind of the large scale uh, assessment is just ignored because it's, it's hard actually to tackle this kind of literacy. So we're trying to use the ICT to, to actually to, uh, to do this part. For example, we, we're trying to use the ICT uh, to develop the com competence uh, oriented test items, uh, like uh, um, arts uh, competence or arts literacy. Uh, Yan Feng just uh, introduced. Uh, for example, we ask the students to sing, uh, painting, uh, create the melody. But all this kind of work is hard actually to, uh, rec uh, to record, uh, hard to code. So we're trying to use uh, new technology and also writing skills, scientific inquiry, collaborative problem solving. So I think that in Chinese situation, it's, it's kind of easy for us actually to ask students, ask students do this kind of work in large scale assessment. But it's difficult actually to code this kind of data because it's uh, massive and uh, it's, it's not routine data. So we use uh, ICT tech, uh, techniques and the data manual approach uh, trying to do uh, some, some this kind of work. We also try to develop uh, game-based assessment. So here is an example. Uh, it's, it's, it's an example for we trying to assess students' creativity. So it's this example, so this girl trying to uh, get the apple from a squirrel. You, you, you see apple is on the squirrel. So how they can get that? Because there is no accurate answer for that. So this is, so I want to give a, a little bit more example for this uh, our effort. So one effort is, as I mentioned, that uh, when we uh, running uh, assess uh, uh, NIC uh, program, uh, actually Ministry of Education uh, asked us to, to test the students' performance and the literacy uh, instead of their subject matter knowledge. So when we talk, when we think about students' arts performance, uh, arts literacy, so usually the typical one will be uh, they can sing after learning the music, they can draw a painting uh, after uh, they learn video arts. But how to do that? Um, actually, we use uh, we collect this kind of information uh, through internet uh, in 2016. And uh, next year, 2019, we also do again this kind of the task. Uh, so uh, in our task, actually, uh, we in a one time, in, in a one time, we actually collect uh, this kind of, um, the sample size about this kind of the task is, is uh, about uh, um, 15,000 students will do this kind of the, the, the task simultaneously. Um, I, uh, here is some kind of the, the brief uh, the, uh, information about how we collect the students' uh, singing performance. We uh, actually ask the students uh, to uh, sing uh, two songs uh, through internet. Of course, uh, uh, this is, uh, and we, uh, uh, we, we, uh, minimize the uh, ICT uh, conditions. So we just uh, uh, ask each sample the school just how one computer can access internet. So we are asking stu uh, students to do this kind of work. I think the biggest part for this kind of assessment is that how we code students' performance. Actually, we use a uh, machine uh, learning uh, or uh, computer uh, automatic scoring approach. Uh, we uh, hire uh, some kind of experts to code uh, two, uh, 500 uh, to uh, 1,000 piece of students' uh, singing uh, voice, and uh, we ask uh, computer to learn their uh, coding system, and uh, uh, after that, we let computer automatically score uh, students' uh, singing uh, uh, materials. Uh, and uh, we actually, we uh, give a score in your know, five, uh, five, five assessment uh, domain, like uh, uh, expression, integrate, uh, influence, 
and uh, uh, something like that. So this is uh, one example. And uh, another example is a game-based uh, assessment. Here is uh, another example. Actually, we try to assess uh, students' um, uh, envir en en environmental uh, space special ability. So because it's very important for student, uh, for people to survive in a real uh, uh, real world, world. Actually, we con uh, con uh, construct uh, we we construct the uh, virtual uh, maze uh, assessment. Uh, this uh, assessment actually based on the uh, cognitive structure of environmental uh, special ability. We ask students actually to go through the uh, maze, uh, uh, three dimension maze. <coughs> So from beginning point uh, to the end of point. Uh, of course, when you know, students uh, are trying to go through this three dimension maze, so they can explore the how to get to the final point. If uh, it's hard for them, we give them some uh, the maze map, and they can see map, and uh, again to go through the, this, this puzzle or this, this, this maze. And uh, actually, we collect some kind of indicators uh, uh, for this kind of assessment. For example, we have a th uh, six category uh, of the indicators for uh, VMA, like a global uh, index, uh, so uh, global uh, total scores and time timing, how they spend in each level, all this kind of the information and. Uh, whether or not they use a, a maze map and this kind of information. So the variable, there are about the 119 variables actually we can get from this uh, game-based uh, 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 assessment. And uh, we, because this is under the, it's a pilot period, uh, we ask uh, more than uh, 200 uh, students actually to do this kind of the, uh, to plan this, uh, this game. But end up there are about 100 uh, students just uh, go through all the, the, the required uh, the process. And uh, uh, we set up uh, 10 levels uh, of difficulty from very easy part and to very difficult part. So uh, the difficulty was based on uh, the bonus uh, and also the uh, some kind of difficult uh, 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 difficult uh, some some kind of uh, difficult level, and uh, actually we trend we use the uh, discriminate analysis and uh, we use uh, uh, we uh, analyze uh, this uh, assessment whether or not uh, can be used to tackle students' uh, uh, environmental uh, special uh, ability. Uh, we, uh, we also use uh, Santa Barbara science of direction scale and uh, pers uh, perspective taking or special or, uh, or orientation, orientation test, uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, traditional or typical uh, 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 test form, trying to compare the uh, 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 compare our game-based assessment with a traditional, uh, typical uh, assessment tool, and uh, we found that um, we actually we synthesize the total score of the environmental uh, space ability. You can see we uh, uh, the model fit is pretty good. So that's some kind of uh, work, preliminary uh, work actually we, we are doing. So the purpose of this kind of the work, we're trying to actually use uh, uh, new technology, uh, new approach actually to try to tackle students' uh, uh, literacy or competence. So, so that's a very brief in, uh, introduction. The few um, uh, prospects, uh, of course, uh, uh, one word, we're trying to break through uh, from paper, pencil test to computer adaptive test and uh, even to real-time dynamic uh, data collection. Uh, but we, we know that it's not easy. 
it seems that ICT already provides some kind of possibility to go there, but we can use, how we use the ICT uh, technology, how we use uh, um, AI or uh, machine learning, uh, data mining approach to do that is still a very difficult part. We will work together with the companies, with other researchers trying to do that. Thank you very much. Well, I, I think that we, we may have on. a couple minutes for questions before we move on to the breakout sessions. Thank you for your presentation. And I, um, so, because you've been mentioned about the um, sampling strategy and it's being implemented um, pretty much like um, the online version has been really popular. And I want to ask, like, um, like, could you tell, tell me a little bit more about the sampling strategy, especially while you were using the app? It's saying like uh, the local uh, Department of Education might report some data and the, are, um, are, are you folks, like as researchers, select the sample, or are they kind of point out which school gonna take the test, or uh, you just send out everything to every school, every student, and uh, whoever complete just uh, you know send it over? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, as I mentioned just now, we use a three-stage uh, uh, proportional probability uh, sampling uh, methods. So, which means that uh, the first stage, we uh, uh, randomly select uh, counties from uh, roughly amongst uh, 3,000 counties in mainland China area. And the second stage, actually, uh, within each sample the county, uh, we draw random sample, uh, school sample, actually, from uh, each uh, uh, sampled county. And the third, within each school, we just draw uh, 13 uh, students uh, at grade four level and, and all uh, grade eight level. So all this kind of process is a random sampling approach. Local educational administration will give us a help and uh, will provide us uh, uh, information we will use uh, for the sampling process but they don't actually uh, interrupt and they don't give some kind of uh, uh, our process. So eventually, so this is, uh, because this uh, NIC uh, pro program is kind of a policy program, uh, as long as we draw this county or school or students, they, are, they, they have a responsibility actually to to give uh, their informations and to uh, to work together with us. So yeah. whoever being sampled have to finish the test. Um, that's that's also kind of the random sampling mm -hmm. um, from the county for the school and students are also applied for both um, those using paper tests as well as those using the um, app or online version. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But have to uh, uh, a little bit uh, curious about this uh, term. Actually, students they may have a later choice if they don't want. They will say no, nah. but they, they, they didn't fill out this kind of uh, they didn't fill out the test form. But that's very little uh, percentage of students do this way. Uh, I actually. Uh, uh, actually, if, um, our data um, re uh, response rate is uh, it's roughly about uh, one hundred percent. But among all these kind of the the, the, uh, fit, uh, the test form, we can show that the very little, uh, as in no more than one po one percent of students uh, didn't feel very well for their test form. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. It was really interesting and motivating. 
Uh, my question is, uh, uh, the system is really huge, and to implement anything, this uh, computer system in all the country, basically, basically, it's a uh, hard work. So, uh, what was the strategic, and how much time you used to transform this uh, usual writing paradigm to other one by using electronic systems? Um, and so far, I would say I don't know the specific uh, period for that, because uh, you know that, uh, as I mentioned, the channel is so broad. In some area, they don't have this kind of information technologies uh, facilities. So which means that it's hard for them actually to uh, finish all this kind of data collection process uh, on, uh, online or all this kind of work. But uh, our program is a policy-oriented program. We must uh, consider the bottom of uh, the, uh, the sample. Uh, we don't want uh, frustrated uh, the uh, schools or students who or which is located in very poor or rural area. So, so, so far, actually, we collect information through internet for the teachers and for principals. It's fairly easy because if we define, they have a very limited information facilities. If there is one computer which can access the internet, will be, they have a very limited. But for 30 kids, I'm not sure that how many, how long we can reach that kind of the condition? Yeah. There are no, there are no questions. Uh, let's give us a, another round of applause to the speakers.